So, I'm trying to remember where we left off last time. Let me bring the game up real quick. Now it's funny because I actually named the save file. Why is everyone so mean? <laughs> I do kind of remember that. Okay, what we're playing is Nancy Drew. Um, we are here in Venice, Italy, and we have been asked by the, uh, I don't know, Prudence Rutherford, I guess. Hey, Ferrier, welcome to the stream. Um, uh, Prudence Rutherford like got us hooked up with the Italian FBI to stop some like art thefts. Um, this dude, I think his name is Colin. He's like real weird. Um, there's a lady over here. Her name is Helena. She's like all right. She's from Germany. The lady up on the roof, her name is Margarita. She owns the house we're staying in. She freaking hates us. So, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> all right. I don't even have my notes. I don't even have my notes. The Italian FBI. Um, yeah. That's her. The good, the good, the good, the good, the good, if the FBI, the Italian FBI. All right. Now, my memory's a little spotty. Helena is pretty nice. She's quite nice. Maybe I should think about putting this back down at Junior Detective one of these days so that I just remember what happens. I remember last time we spied on a guy. Oh, yeah, there's a guy who they think is the primary suspect. We spied on him. We broke into his office. We put a tiny tracker in his pigeon friend. Ridiculous. Okay, find the tracking device. Yeah, we did all that. Great. Uh, this guy, yeah, attached a message to the train pigeon, and then we went and we found it, and it was a micro dot message saying, Il Dottore requests you change the safe room lock combination to 43556. Who is Il Dottore? I know, I might, I might need the note. Well, my notes are on the bookcase behind my secret, my secret shelf. It's on the computer shelf. It's my notes, it's the behind the scenes. Oh no, they're stuck to a package of Photo paper. All right, got him. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow, there is literally nothing else helpful on this this note paper. So, uh, aside from everybody's names, which I did write down, yeah, Colin, Margarita, Helena, Antonio Fango, I think is the guy that we've been tracking. Almost home after a very long trip. Nice. All right, um... A peek, a literal peek behind the curtain. Okay, that's our way out. Um, okay, so the idea is that we need to find out who Il Dottore is. That's our current thing. Hello, Nancy. Oh, good. He has I should be to running say. along. Cheerio. And I'm pretty sure we'd asked Margarita last so, time. So, what's going on? What made you decide to stay here this trip? I met Marguerite at a party last October, and when she heard I was going to need a place to stay when I made this trip, she practically begged me to stay here. Interesting, because that is not the story she told us. She begged you? Did she ever? She's lonely and quite insecure. She wants to believe she has lots of friends in high places, but they're not her friends. Oh. Not really. And I think deep down she knows that, poor thing. Thanks for talking. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. Tschüss. Oh, tschüss. That means bye in German. Hello, Nancy. There's Margarita. Guess I'll okay, be she's going. got nothing else Ciao. for us. Ciao. All right. Well, I'm gonna find out who Il Dottore is now. If I remember correctly, there was like a place. Um. Oh, oh. Hello. Oh, the FBI Nancy, is calling I'm me. Here from you. Have you examined the micro dot? Oh, yes, I have. Yes, I, I have. Sorry, I should have called. 
Anyway, the message, which was written in English, said, Il Dottore requests you to change the safe room lock combination to 43556. Il Dottore? Yes, which is really hmm. interesting, because in his office, Fongo has a poster of Commedia oh, Dell'Arte right. masks. Oh, right, it was the Commedia Dell'Arte. He's crossed out all but five of the masks, and among the ones that aren't crossed out are the Brigella mask... The mask the Phantom wears. Right. It and the mask for Il Dottore wasn't crossed out either. Hmm. And it was in the middle, like it was more important than the others. And when I went back to the place where I'm staying, a box of chocolates had just been delivered for someone named Il Dottore, which means it's very possible that Il Dottore is one of the people at the Canos Costa. Perhaps Fango and the Phantom and whoever else they are working with are going by the names of Commedia dell'arte characters. This would make Del it easier Arte. to secretly communicate with each other. And if that's true, perhaps those chocolates are a message of some kind. And this Il Dottore was at the center well, of the I definitely wouldn't have eaten them all. Perhaps the person the message was meant for is the ringleader. Just what I was thinking. Here is what we will do. I will have a technician hide no, tracking oh, devices. Oh, tracking devices. Somebody else has to do it. We don't have to find them. them. Then, explode. when we know which of them is Il Dottore, we will activate the appropriate device and be able to follow him. Awesome. Let's see. Helena's always writing, so for her, I could plant a bug in her pen, maybe. And Margarita is always sunning herself. I will have so a technician hide, a hide them. In a sunglasses I don't think I have but to do for that. Colin, but it is for microscope. Colin, you could bug a mosaic tile. You know, a tessera. He's likely to carry a mosaic tile on his person. If it's from me, he will. <laughs> Long story. This is good that sounds so about. weird and I creepy. Why, Nancy? Why? And the device which you will hide in the pen, then leave them for you in the Banca del Oro ATM. You should give them to each person as soon as you get them. Okay. Will do. Keep your fingers crossed. My fingers are always crossed. It must be hard to get work done if your fingers are always crossed, ma'am. All right, let's get down to the Piazza San Marco. Nancy's gonna get so many steps in. I need a car. Yeah, yeah, I'm working on it. Don't sass me, Nancy Drew. Welcome, Nancy Drew. I got a pickup, right? I think. What I got? Oh, there's my tile. What? So that's a sunglasses case, I'm guessing. And what was the other little thing? Mm. Alright. Alright. And we're walking back. We're walking back. Getting them steps in. Nancy Drew. Alright, back to the Cardinal's Costa. I can't even eat any of them. So lame. Same newspaper. Yep, about the chalice being stolen. Alright. Let's go. I'm ready to go. Let's go talk to <gasps> Spaceship Zoo. Hang on. these days I'm gonna I'm gonna find an easier way to do that <laughs> all right um oh no what did I do I don't want to leave yes yes why is everyone so mean okay we're good all right hello Nancy yeah I saw this case and thought you might like it to keep your I did something nice again. for you Margaret even though you, you clearly are giving me a gift you do not have to do this Nancy but I, I like gifts this one it is very nice oh you don't Gracias. want to insult me about something 
I'll stop pestering you now. Padronissimo. Padronissimo to you too. Don't know what that means. <laughs> Alright. Let's go give him this little, uh... Hello, Nancy. Yeah, Tessera. I came across this Tessera and thought you might like it. It's quite beautiful. All the more because it came from you. Thank Does he you, like us? I shall treasure it. I've kept you long enough. Come back anytime. Is that why he was so weird about our like our locket? Still here, I see. I should be running along. Drop by again. Okay, and then we have this. What is this thing? Um, was I supposed to give that one to somebody? Let me check my notes. Okay, I don't know. Colin B. Colin B. Il Dottore. Helena. Because I thought if I was going to give Helena something, it was going to be like a pen. Oh, Helena's not even here. Da. Let's, uh, let's use our German dictionary so my poor husband doesn't have to translate the entire thing. Interesting people. Sunny June. Weirdest American I've ever met. What is he from? Secret of the Scarlet Hand, I think. Uh, glasses forever halfway down nose due to thick, heavy lenses. Spiked, unnaturally colored hair. Green and pink that day. Compulsive doodler that we do know. Very observant. Very smart. Very hyper. Is determined to find work on the International Space Station because he says he's already held and lost every kind of job there is on Earth. Probably wasn't exaggerating. Was on his way to the Caribbean. Hartmut Krollmeister, the guy who makes all the machines. I would imagine, yes, fabulously wealthy, yet insists on wearing ill-fitting pink jerseys and hosting waste-of-time poetry slams. Always invited to the best parties, plays the token German intellect, adore his fascination with Schiller and monkeys. So, sorry, I just drank that soda and now I have a lot of burps. So... Helena is trying to, like, move up in Venetian society, right? So is she, like, taking notes on all the people that she meets? Rosetta Del Bene met at New Year's Eve party at Palazzo Foglio, owns clothing stores throughout Italy, homes in Venice, Rome, and Savona, loves animals, four dogs, three cats, two potbelly pigs, almost made the 04 Olympic dressage team, renowned, respected, and beloved throughout Venice for her philanthropy, throws luscious parties, creme de la creme only. Speaking of the Olympics, I am super excited for this summer, the 2024 Olympic Olympics. Oh, he's also got stuff in danger by design. I've forgotten. Sunny June's everywhere. Then again, so is Prudence Rutherford. And so is Professor Hoshkiss. They're all in on it. All right, Margarita Fauborg. That's our lady who is hosting us here. The lady who owns our house. A uh, waitress from Pisa, married wealthy shipping magnate, inherited fortune when he died, relative newcomer to Venice, aspires to be part of high society, has money but lacks requisite wit, charm, and chutzpah, uh, goes on cruises to meet potential mates and maintain her tan, skin like soggy toast, <laughs> allows herself to be bullied by the former owner of Canascosta, her palazzo. That would be Professor Hot, or no, Prudence Rutherford. Uh, abysmal taste in art, greatest joy, getting something half price. I mean, if she has an uh, abysmal taste in art, Margarita, then it's probably not her, maybe, right? All right, Colin Baxter, British art restorer. All work, no play, conceited, rarely talks, hiding something? Argues frequently with Margarita about what I don't know. Well, I think he's been arguing with her about just, like, restoring the palazzo, right? Uh, three words best described. Boring, boring, and boring. <gasps> Nancy Drew, a teenager from the States, staying at Cotton's Costa, insistence of Prudence Rutherford, the former owner. Cheerful, upbeat, energetic, wears locket from boyfriend. Should consider doing soft drink commercials? Something odd about her nonetheless. Too wholesome, too perfect, not for Mr. Boring. Locket man has a rival. Uh, girl, rah, Ned does not have any rivals. Our heart belongs to Ned. Story ideas. Oh, right, because she's a writer. So, global warming versus Venice. Agenda of the typical tourist in Venice. How many Venetians know how to swim? I did translate that correctly. <laughs> when Venetians leave Venice, where do they go? The impact of pigeons on Venice. The good, the bad, and the messy. What if Venetians... 
Venetians really think about Il Fantasma. And where did Venetian blinds really come from? That's true. Maybe her lack of taste in art is a ruse. Possible. All right. Did, did Colin just, like, watch us snoop on her? Oh, well. Uh, okay. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this thing. I don't know what that is. Let's, uh, turn it on around here. This is our bedroom, right? We should probably go to the restroom so Nancy can say Just something. Just a minute, please. I, I, I kind of wonder if this will give us like a second chance. Like a, oh. You're going to have to face. Well, then you should lock the door. It's occupied. What? You're going to have Did to you face. just turn on your hair dryer? Ugh, rude. I'm still not sure like what pasta, this is all fresca, for. Alright, well... Was this something? Interactive guide to Venice, right? Okay. Gelato. Oh, okay. Oh, I want gelato. All right. Um. So let's maybe just leave. Oh, right. I already ate all the chocolates. I love chocolate. Okay. <clears throat> well, I don't really know where we're going. I just assumed somebody would, like, call me from the, uh, place. From the FBI. Oh, right, this is the Argon building. Okay. That's that guy we were spying on. What's over here? I'm trying to remember where that shop was. There was, like, a shop that the, um... Yeah, like the pigeon went to or something Trying like this. to use this. my Italian dictionary. Alright, let's do it. House of Games. But they told us we were too American looking or something like that. Yeah. Okay. And then a lot of people insulted our necklace. Our, our locket from Dear Ned. Alright, so we can't get in there. Hmm. Come back to Kano's Costa for a second. Excuse me, signore. Ma quando affonderà Venezia? There's like random people in the background chit chatting. Grazie. Prego, prego. Alright. Observations. All right, she's not really saying much. Oh, or it doesn't really tell me much. Um, what if I call? Like, hey. Okay. Oh, what if I just track them? Maybe. Okay. So the idea is that they are tracking. I should have paid more attention to that phone call. Let's take, uh, oh, let's take Romano La this time. Donne mobile, qual più mal vento, muta da cento e di pensiero. Sempre un amabile, lei già d'orviso, in pianto, in riso, e menzognero. La donna è mobile, qual più mavento, muta da cento. E di pensier, e di pensier, e... I think it'd be so cool to visit Venice. Like a fun place to go. Pasta fresca. 
Alright. I don't foresee us needing anything. Drinks or anything. Flowers. I'm not sure what to do now. Let's go back to the Piazza San Marco and see if there's anything else at the bank for us. Do I have instructions? Okay, we already had those instructions. Nothing to pick up and then our crime dossier is just the list of what was stolen. Alright, so nothing new here. Well, dang. What am I supposed to be doing? Let's go over here. Is this where the, um... Store is the clothing store. Yeah. Creepy masks. Sexy. Man, this clothing's expensive. Oh, oh, there's a gothic mustache and stuff. I don't have that much money left. See, we're currently looking very dashing, I think. That's Nancy Drew. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, we can go. We can. Mm, <laughs> we can something. Can I? I can't call Ned from here, can I? Yeah. Yes, apparently we didn't bring our cell phone. Oh yeah, I'm <laughs> doing All done. All done, thanks, task list. Alright, gotta remember to call Ned, which we did. What to do? I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to do. What is Campo San Polo? That's not the Argon building, is it? No. This is what is this place? Is this the dance club or whatever it is? Dancers wanted. Can we go in here? If you're here for the dance audition, take a look at the dance instruction book. When you think you're ready, put the cat suit on and get on stage. If you're good enough, you can keep the suit and come by anytime you want and dance some tips. Oh, and if you're not here for the audition, beat it. That person is not Italian. <laughs> dance instructions. Okay, but this is how we get uh, more money, apparently. Club Misio. Misio. Uh, the fans expect certain dance moves when certain sounds or cues play. For your audition, please make sure you understand which cue goes with which, which dance move. If ever you're dancing to a cue and a new one plays, even though the first one's also playing, please switch to the dance for the newest cue. Here's a list of cues and their associated dance moves. Tech will try and provide a colored light clue to help you out on the stage. Hello, hello! Ash, Ash, welcome! Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream and hanging out. We are playing Nancy Drew, Phantom of Venice. Um, let's see. Fairy Orb, we survived a harrowing trip. Home, why harrowing? That's not good. Alright, good luck. If you're given the part, you can keep the dance costume free of charge. That's the outfit we have to put on. We're Catwoman. <laughs> we gotta do the monkey, a fuzzy bell. Yellow. Okay. The monkey is yellow, the fuzzy bell. The cheer, when we do some claps and it's teal. The sea kid, when you hear an ocarina. 
and it's orange. Orange and yellow are going to be hard to tell the difference between. The fens at the whistle. The robot on the buzzer. The bob. Ugh, the twist? Oh, these are hard. Okay, the twist is a purple laser. The bob is the red siren. The robot is a green buzzer. The I'm trying to block like half the screen. The fens is the blue whistle. The sea kid is the orange ocarina. The cheer is the does it say blue, but it's teal claps and then yellow uh fuzzy something is the monkey. Okay. So fuzzy bell yellow is the monkey. Teal claps are the cheer. Orange ocarina is sea kid. Tornadoes had to pull off the highway hunger down in McDonald's bathroom. Goodness gracious, that is a harrowing trip home. You are correct. Okay. Uh, blue whistle is the fens, which sounds like the feds, maybe, because you're running from the feds. You hear, the, like, the whistle and the sirens and stuff. Green buzzer is robot. Okay, green buzzer. Like, buzz buzz robot. Okay, the red siren is the bob. I don't know why that would be. And the purple laser is the twist. All right, let's give this a shot. This, <laughs> I don't foresee this going well. When the music let's... starts, you start. Okay. Oh. Okay. I just gotta click them. That's much easier. taking that costume with you. Okay. It's really hard to hear. Okay. I don't remember hearing that one at all. That, those were easy. Okay, those were easy, but those first two are a little difficult. I don't think I hit them at all. I'm sure they were done. Alright, let's try it again. Come on, Nancy. We got this. And a one. And let's a shake two. it up. anything, right? Oh, uh... Good. Yeah. Terrible. No? Okay. I don't 
like you're incredible. You doctor. Uh, Nancy? Nancy? Forget it. From now on, your name's uh, Punchy. Punchy LaRue. Punchy LaRue? Uh, next! Our name is Punchy LaRue. Let's go. Alright, any clues here at the club? I don't see any. Oh my goodness. Where am I? Oh, Campo San Polo. Okay. Let's go back to Connors Costa now that we spent like some time dancing. Oh, there we go. Antonio? Si, ciao. Puoi venire a cena domani per caso? Non mi vedete. I did. <laughs> I realized I needed to move, but then didn't. Good news, the urn only gave you a concussion. Bad news, something happened. <laughs> oh, yes, we'll try again. Yeah, I saw the, like, falling stuff, and then it's... Okay. So what was that? Did that come from, like, the balcony where Margarita is? Yeah, I don't know what that- I just saw, like, the falling leaves, so I, like, tried to look up. What? What was that? You look upset. Yeah. A big urn fell off the roof and almost hit me as it's I was It's so weird. In. It fell from this roof? Mava! The edge of the roof must have crumbled out from under it. Something has to repair. Mm -hmm. Bella fare! I am glad you are all right, of course. Of course. Uh, of course. I'll let you get back to your sunbathing. Bella roba. Okay, sorry. I'm gonna eat bits and pieces of a uh, pop tart while I'm on stream because I am starving. <laughs> well, it wasn't one of these. Okay. What was the point of that? Like, did she try to kill Nancy? Hello, Nancy. You don't I have need any... to get going. Okay. Drop by again. I wonder if Helena is uh, still in the restroom. Have we been able to go in here? No, not yet. You should get a pop tart. Agreed. Everybody should get a pop tart. Colin, don't look at this. <gasps> I can use it to get in here. Okay. All right. So this one affects those two. This one affects those two. This one affects these, but they're on the same level. That one's by itself. That one's on, okay, that one's by itself. All right, so this one, this one, and this. Why did a chicken just what? 
wait, what just happened? Oh, I have, oh, I have an egg. I have a, is that like the Easter egg for this game? <laughs> what in the world? Um, what is my Pop-Tart of choice? Honestly, I mean, these are strawberry. That is my husband's Pop-Tart of choice. Um, uh, my Pop-Tart of choice is probably the, is it, it's brown sugar cinnamon. How long do you need to be in the bathroom, ma'am? Although, if I had to pick a runner-up, cherry. Wait, what's this? This wasn't here before. Thought you might enjoy these. They are from a shop on Judica. Judica? At least give me a bunch hmm, of salami. Interesting flavor. Ooh. That didn't sound good. That sounded like an interesting gulp. Why did he get us a bunch of salamis? Come back in a few minutes. Uh, what if I need to go? All right, do I go talk to him about the weird salami? Ugh, I'm yeah. Good. I was like, how Dancing? do you know it's from him? Are what if it's like right? a... Oh my gosh, you're positively green. Well, Dancing? if you've gotten out of the bathroom... Oh, I've been drugged. I've been drugged oh, by the salamis. I so not have eaten those sausages. Like brown sugar cinnamon, especially when they're toasted, but right now you've got s'mores. S'mores pop tarts are good. S'mores are excellent choice. Can't go wrong. Alright. Um I'm in here. She's still in the restroom after that. Ma'am. Nancy, I've been worried about you. How are you feeling? A little angry, A little actually. Angry, actually. You gave me those, those sausages. sausages. You left in my room gave me food poisoning. What, what sausages? I didn't leave sausages in your room. A the likely they came story. With said they were from you. Well, someone else must have written it and signed my name because I promise you, I did not leave any sausages or any meat in your room. Besides, you don't think someone would give you tainted sausages on purpose, do you? They might have. Why would someone try to poison you? You're right. It was probably no reason. just no reason at all. Of course it was. I'll let you get back to work. <laughs> Ciao. Okay. Ciao, indeed. Hey, Margarita. Did you see anybody deliver some? Hmm. Oh, uh, are we trying to see if like the handwriting matches? It doesn't. Dear Estella, thank you so much for inviting me to your party last week. What a grand event! It was an honor to have been seated next to the Count Würzburger. Although his breath was quite fragrant, it took some getting used to. I'm sure you were unaware of this unfortunate problem when you made the seating assignments. I look forward to seeing you at the reception for the Fredonian ambassador. Oh, Yanni Volksteyer. I would laugh if it was him. Very truly yours, Margarita Fowlborg. Why would you be like, thank you, but I'm upset at where you seated me? I feel like that's a good way not to get invited back to things, but what do I know? Um. Okay, well, she's gone. What do I do with this thing? I don't know. Okay, well. Uh, where did she go? Somebody poisoned me with sausages. Oh, where'd Colin go? Girl, get in there. What's happening? What, this looks like a puzzle. I would like it to be a puzzle. The T's looked similar, did they? Yeah, I guess rich people are older. <laughs> Should they be though? Should they? Uh, like the G, the C. I mean, this handwriting 
even the T's, they're not they don't have like the upper swoop. This handwriting is completely different. But like why would you use your own handwriting when writing a note? Like a, a note associated with um Oh the fake mustache, yes. Let's see what the great fake mustache looks. Oh! It is his handwriting! Look at it! Look at that handwriting! I don't the care about this book, this but- The envelope is the same as the handwriting on the note that came with the sausages. Which means Colin sent them. Yeah, he's a liar liar pants on fire, Nancy. Private viewing of the Chalice of St. Gervais, January 18th. Meet Sister Coretta in Su Sud Room? So of convent at 4 p.m. So, care of the British Postal Service. Interesting. And he. Uh. Okay, so the Chalice of St. Gervais. Gervais and his twin brother Protase were sons of two Christian martyrs in Milan. They too were martyred for their faith, probably when Marcus Aurelius was a Roman emperor from 161 to 180. Little else is known about their lives. It is the way in which their relics were discovered that made them truly remarkable. In 386, St. Ambrose needed relics in order to consecrate his new basilica in Milan. Heeding what he had seen in a dream, he started digging in a cemetery outside of the city and there found the remains of St. Gervais and St. Protase. Um, the relics were moved to his basilica and buried there, and the twins became the patron seats of Milan. The story wasn't over. In the grave with St. Gervais was the cup. Was it Gervais? White Star Witcher, welcome to the stream. We're doing good. Um, we've recently uh, nearly had a pot fall on our head and we were drugged through the use of salami. So, you know, pretty excellent tonight, actually. Um, in the grave with St. Gervais was the cup he and his brother had presumably shared growing up. Undoubtedly placed in the grave by a friend or relative, the cup was quite plain, most likely made of tin. Wait, didn't we read this already? Legend has it that upon exposure to the sun, the cup was miraculously transformed. Twin's initials are still on it, only now it's a bunch of precious gem gemstones. There's no record that the Chalice of St. Gervais was ever placed on display in the Basilica Sant'Ambrogio in Milan, which means it was either given away or more likely stolen soon after its discovery. More than a thousand years later, the Chalice surfaced in the Assisi when it was used to pay off a debt. Eventually, it fell into the hands of a priest who realized what it was, and in 1708, Presented it to the convent of St. Gervais in Venice. For 300 years, the nuns have watched over their beloved relic. While the convent is closed to the public, it's possible, though extremely difficult, for people who demonstrate an interest in art or history to arrange for a private viewing of the chalice. Okay. So not just anybody can go in there and see it. So this says that somebody arranged a private viewing of the chalice of St. Gervais, January 18th, meet Sister Coretta. And I'm, we're guessing this is Colin's handwriting. Um, because it definitely looks like it based on all of this and so what he's the one what if there is no what if everybody is like a copycat um <laughs> a copycat burglar like there was an original person who was il fantasma and they put on the mask and they stole something and then somebody else was like "Ooh, what a great idea i'm gonna do that too it feels like I'm supposed to be doing something here. Like, this looks like it has hinges and it opens up, but nothing is interactable here. Which seems weird. Oh, is that the day the chalice was stolen? Great question. I actually wrote that down. No, the chalice was stolen on 125. Good thinking, Fairy Orb. Okay. Um... Although, I mean, to be fair, his private viewing of the chalice was before the day it was stolen. So it could be that somebody had gone in to, like, look at it and, um, whatchamacallit, like, m maybe he went in to, like, case the place and see what kind of security they had or something else. Okay, the relics of St. Theodore. Uh, 
I'm curious about this. Two tall columns built in the 12th century flank the Piazzetta of Piazza San Marco. Oh, okay. So this is a Piazza San Marco. Top one is a winged lion, symbol of Mark the Evangelist, and the uh, top the other is a man standing on a crocodile, symbol of Egypt. This is St. Theodore of Amasia, the original patron saint of Venice. As Christianity spread throughout Europe, in the Middle East, following the Edict of Constantine, it was common for cities to obtain the relics of a particular saint, then dedicate their city to their protection. In return, that saint would guard the city. So for their patron saint, the Byzantine officials who found in Venice chose St. Theodore, a young soldier who was martyred for his Christian beliefs in AD 306 in Amasia, a city in what is now Turkey. By the 9th century, however, Venetian officials considered the Theodore to be an Eastern saint, one more closely associated with Byzantium than Rome and lacking in star power. And so when St. Mark's relics were translated to, translated to Venice, probably transferred to Venice, in 828, the relics of St. Theodore were quietly removed from the Doge's chapel and forgotten. His body is said to have been translated to the church. I am not understanding the use of that verb. Uh, which bears his name in Constantinople, while his head is in Gaeta, Italy. But it is unclear whether these are the same relics that were once enshrined in Venice. So his relics are his body and his head? That's, the, I, that's a relic. So they were quietly removed from the Doge's chapel. Now, there was a sword that was stolen from the Doge's palace, but... All right, relics of St. How many relics are there? All right, relics of St. Mark. Not surprisingly, remains of St. Mark the Evangelist. Hang on. Um, when he died... Okay, I'm just going to read it. Not surprisingly, the remains of St. Mark the Evangelist. It's fun to learn. Uh, are buried in St. Mark's Basilica. Famous for the writing of the earliest of the four Gospels in the New Testament, Mark spread the Gospel as well, traveling great distances to preach, eventually founding a church in Alexandria, Egypt. When he died, his remains were enshrined at the church he had founded in the city of Venice at that time did not exist. Anybody who becomes a martyr has guts. I mean, stand up for what you believe in. Uh, by 828, Venice not only existed, it, it was looking for a way to demonstrate its independence from both Rome and Byzantium and to be recognized as the major commercial and cultural center, it was well on its way to becoming. Consequently, a group of Venetian merchants obtained the body of St. Mark, moving, oh, here we go, translating, uh, is another word for moving, I guess. So, moving it from Alexandria to the Chapel of the Doge, the secular ruler of Venice. Some accounts say the merchants purchased the remains, but it's far more likely that they stole them. The city rationalized its actions by recounting a story in which St. Mark, while sailing to a town nearby, was forced to wait out a storm in the lagoon, which would later give rise to Venice. An angel reportedly appeared to him and said, be at peace here, as in, don't be afraid of the storm. The Venetians, however, claimed the angel meant rest here, as in, be buried and rest eternally here. In honor of his city's new patron saint, the Doge rebuilt and expanded his chapel, which eventually became the Grand Basilica as it is today, and the city of Venice basked in its newfound status as guardian and protector of one of the greatest figures in the history of Christianity. What else we got? Oh, what is a relic? Okay. Throughout the ages, the remains and intimate possessions of religious figures have been recovered, preserved, and venerated by their followers. Such items known as relics are particularly important in Catholicism. After Constantine facilitated the establishment of Christianity as the predominant religion of the Roman Empire in AD 312, consecrating new churches by securing and sometimes displaying the relics of saints became standard practice. Oh, I, I often think... Uh, maybe not often, but every time you see Alexandria mentioned, I agree. Like, yes, the Library of Alexandria is lost forever, and who knows, like, what amazing things that library must have contained. Sad. Uh, let's see. Over the centuries, the cathedrals and basilicas were built and rebuilt across Europe. The relics associated with them often dictated their political as well as spiritual importance. Relics were kept inside a cavity inside the altar or sepulchre of a church or in a container, reliquary, or more often they were simply buried so they would become literally and figuratively part of the church's foundation. Often, wait, reliquary with the icon of the nativity within a Byzantine frame. Okay, often a relic consisted of partial remains, sometimes a single finger or a lock of hair. Sometimes it was an item that a saint had habitually worn or touched, clothes, jewelry, and even dishware. It was, and still is, not uncommon for the relics of a single saint to be in several different churches on several different con uh, continents. St. Bernadette here was exhumed after 30 years and was seemingly inhuman to decomposition. 
Interesting. Uh, the bodies of some saints seem miraculously immune to decomposition. These incorruptibles can still be seen in churches throughout Europe, lying in state in glass sepulchers, their natural appearance belying the fact that they died centuries earlier. What follows is a survey of the relics that can be found in the modern-day Venice. Some of, About some of them, much is known. About most of them, though, little is known. History of many of them is a frustrating mishmash of fact and fancy, but none of the relics ended up where they are by accident. Someone sometime believed they were sacred and went to great lakes to preserve them against the unrelenting onslaught of time and human forgetfulness. Hmm. All right, so there we go. We've learned a little bit about, I swear, it feels like I can like click on these things. Uh, we've learned, we've learned some things. I mean, it could just be, like, Colin's a weirdo, but he has, like, a uh, legit interest in history and art. I mean, if you look at, like, the walls of this place, though, it's definitely, like, falling apart. So maybe he's just really trying his hardest to figure out um, what's going on. No, I don't really want to go up there. I'll keep turning it around. I'm going to go out now that I have died from tainted sausages. If it were me, I would just eat these chocolates. Like, they, they've been out here all day in the sun. Il dottore, he doesn't even know he's missing those. Alright, so... Hang on, go back a second. Oh, I didn't really mean to go back. Scary, but also wondrous if those scenes are still in the condition of which they died centuries ago. Even the Egyptians couldn't preserve their bodies that well. Something to think about. All right, what have we got? Hello. That's our thing with the micro dot that we looked at. Thought you might enjoy these. They are from a shop on the Judeca. Let's see if we can find that shop and see if we can figure out who bought them, maybe. Shop on the Judeca? Oh, like somewhere down here, maybe? This is something della Judeca. There's not really anywhere we can go here. Canale de San, de San Marco. Canale de la... Oh. Mm. <clears throat> All right. Okay, Colin left a bag of sausages in my room, for me, in my room. Only after I ate them, I felt really, really sick. The question is, did he give me bad sausages on purpose? Or did someone else give them to me and sign Colin's name to throw me off their trail? Or, consider this, Colin did get us sausages. Although, I think he lied because he said, I didn't get you any sausages. But perhaps, he did get us sausages... And then someone tainted them afterwards. I'm gonna go call Ned while we're here at the place. At the Carnes Costa. Where's that phone? Uh, phone in my room. Where is my room? There it is. Alright, get, get out of here. Um, oh, well, okay, now I need it. Our beloved boyfriend, Ned. Love talking to Ned. Uh, Ned, Nickerson's phone. Joe, is that you? Nancy, <laughs> yeah, it's me. H how you doing? How's Italy? Fine, Italy's great. I hear you've been doing some tinkering. Mm -hmm. Told Ned I'd fix that noise his car's been making. In fact, he's out on the road taking it for a little test drive. <laughs> you fixed it, huh? Yeah, no big deal. I mean, with Frank on, I've got some spare time on my hands, so why not put it to good use? How come Ned didn't take his phone with him? No need. He's just gonna drive around the block a couple of times. So what's been happening there? Mm -hmm. The palazzo where I'm staying, the Canas Costa, has some beautiful artwork in it, some of which is being restored by this guy from England, who's kind of a head mm -hmm. case. A head case? How so? He's your typical temperamental artist, very sensitive. You have to be real careful what you say and do around him or he'll go off on you. And... Mm, let's talk about this one. This one's way more interesting. I think he may be using a fake name. 
I know. I'm that? sorry. We can't talk to Don't Ned. Know yet. Apparently, it's Joe. Well, he's hiding something, and if you find out what, and if he finds out that you mm -hmm. found out, he's probably not going to like it. I so agree. watch yourself, Nan. I'm sharing a room with a woman from Germany who's a journalist, which makes me kind of nervous. Why does that make you nervous? Because mm -hmm. journalists are kind of like detectives. They're observant, they ask questions, they snoop. They steal art. You'll find out you're working for the GDIF. Exactly. You're a teenager from the States, Nancy. The last thing anyone's <laughs> going to take you for is an undercover cop. He's Trust not wrong. me on this one. Want to know what my assignment is? I'm one of the Hardy Boys, of course I do. I'm supposed to do surveillance on a guy named Antonio Fongo. You get to spy on someone? The police suspect he has something to do with the thefts being attributed to the Phantom. They page me every time they see him go into his office so I can watch him through binoculars from the roof of the place where I'm staying and report in if he does anything suspicious. So has he done anything suspicious? If you call receiving messages carried by pigeons suspicious, then yes, he sure has. Somebody is sending him messages by pigeon? Well, if he is up to something and thinks the police may be tapping his phone, which they are, it actually kind of makes sense. But pigeons are just so... Messy? I was going to say primitive, but messy works. Breaking news! It looks like one of the people with whom Antonio Fongo has been secretly communicating is someone here at the car. It may even be the person who's been orchestrating all the heists the Phantom has pulled. You mean you've been rubbing elbows with the ringleader all this time? Yes. Talk about your lucky breaks. So what's your next move? The GDIF wants me to plant bugs on everyone at the car. That way, if the police turn up something solid against one of them, they can activate their bug, track them down, and make an arrest. You get to plant bugs on people? Now I am really jealous. I better get to work. I'll tell Ned you called and fill him in on everything. See you, Nance. Bye, Joe. Hello, Nancy. What's wrong? The person who left me those bad sausages. It was you, after all. No, it wasn't. I told you before, the I... The handwriting on the note they came with my, matches my the note I found yep. in that book on religious relics. The one that belongs to you. All right, yes, it was me. But I had no idea those sausages were tainted. I just thought you might like them. I muted it because I, I was eating. I tried to my way out of it because I... I couldn't bear for you to know that I made such a ghastly mistake. But you liar, liar, you pants on fire. You liar and an utter fool. Just know that I am truly sorry. Causing you to be miserable was absolutely the last thing I wanted to do. Well, I'm fine now, and everyone makes mistakes, so apology accepted. Apology not accepted. But I'm still kind of mad that you lied to me. I don't blame you one iota, but I'll make it up to you. I don't know how yet, but I will. Yeah, I tell me about this, huh? While I was looking Tell through your book this, on religious huh? relics, oh, no, I Colin. noticed you made an appointment to see that chalice the Phantom just stole. Mm -hmm. The chalice of St. Gervase? Mm -hmm. That's Gervase? Right, I did. As a mosaicist, I'm always interested in seeing how stones and jewels are inlaid in metal, so I arranged to see it outside its case. Magnificent piece of work. My timing was magnificent as well. Two nights later, it was stolen. How's that for coincidence? Uh -huh. I've kept you long enough. Ciao. Okay, sorry. Before, when I was muted, I just realized that we the, the thing that they gave me, uh, the little white pill thing, was probably a device that I could bug Helena's pen. That's why she's in the bathroom all of a sudden now. Um, but I said, what I was saying is that, why didn't they just give me a pen? I mean, I guess if she's a writer, she really likes her pen. But, like, they gave me a, a brand new sunglasses case that's bugged. They gave me a Tessera that's bugged. Why not just give me a pen? Alright, so now I gotta wait for them to do something suspicious. Let's see if, uh... See if someone will call me or something. Or do I, do I call her and tell her, hey, everybody's bugged? No, I don't. Okay. What about message, maybe? 
No, track, okay. Well. Now we're kind of back in the same situation that we were in earlier. I'm just gonna like leave and go someplace. Um, let's see what my notes say. Observations. Colin admitted to leaving the sausages in my room. Do I believe him? There is something just a little wonky about him, Nancy. It's true. It's still just the same notes on our suspects. I'm not sure where to go next. Have we been? Oh, that's where the clothing shop is. We still can't get in this place. There's nothing going on here. Nothing that we can interact with or click. Like, I can never tell, like, do we need to waste time for them to do something weird and suspicious and then we have to track them? Or is there something we haven't done to trigger the rest of the... <laughs> to trigger the story to move on a little bit. Let's see what's going on in Piazza San Marco. Hello, hello. Yes, yes. Looks good. Okay, anything interesting? It's that one. Your old felt Zeitschrift. Führen in Österreich. Well, Österreich is... Austria? Oh, well, I didn't really. Okay, I guess we can see what this is about. Oh, The Trial of Leo Macciano, Part 5. Oh, by Helena Berg. This is an article that she wrote. The prosecution spent the first two weeks of what will undoubtedly prove to be one of the most important trials of the 21st century, establishing the foundation for its case against Venetian crime boss Leo Macciano. Finally, in week three, it was time to call witnesses. One by one, Macchiano's alleged henchmen entered the box, and piece by piece, his empire fell apart, buckling under the weight of the testimony of his, which his former minions, now witnesses for the state, unhappily surrendered. Luigi Lacino went first. He soon revealed that all the major players in Macchiano's organization had code names based on the names of Roman emperors. Lacino's code name was Nero. Macchiano's code name was, not unsurprisingly, Hadrian. One of the Roman Empire's most productive rulers had Hadrian run a corporation instead of a crime ring. Uh, Nero would have been his director of communications, the man in charge of distributing information within the organization. At first, Lucino appeared to be an expert at discerning who in the organization needed to know what and when they needed to know it. But as his testimony progressed and he was relentlessly bombarded with proof of his ties to Macchiano, it became clear that Lucino was merely following orders and that only Macchiano truly understood what had to be done when and by whom. Next to the stand came Pietro Bonetti, known to... Uh, known to those in Macchiano's organizations as Tiberius, the equivalent of its director of research. Macchiano would, through Lucino, tell Bonetti what he wanted to steal, and Bonetti would devise a way to steal it. On the hard drives of three computers that were recovered uh, from his flat, authorities found the schematics for hundreds of security systems. Enhanced by covert surveillance, information obtained through bribery and old-fashioned deduction, these schematics allowed Bonetti, a computer hacker since the age of nine, to analyze systems. He was responsible for finding, hiring, and overseeing the people who perpetuated the actual or perpetrated the actual heist, making sure they were trained and equipped to deal with the obstacles his research told him to expect. So skilled were Benetti and the persons in his employ, uh, employ I guess, uh, that in two instances more than 72 hours passed before anyone realized a theft occurred. Unfortunately, Benetti's expertise in an adoration for all things digital provided to be his downfall. He developed a unique way to encrypt all data stored on his computers, and because he was arrogant enough to think that no one would ever be able to decipher the code, he stored everything, including all of his communications with Lucino, the content of which the prosecution soon proved had essentially come from Macchiano. To Menendi's credit, it took three technologies 
technicians working around the clock for six months to decrypt his data, but decrypted they did, which ultimately allowed the prosecution to show that Bonetti's activities had originated with Macchiano, who, as a result, found himself drifting ever closer to conviction. But his momentum was halted when Enrico Tazza, whose codename, according to the prosecution, was Otho, took the stand. Rumored to be Macchiano's director of distribution, person received, hid, and ultimately disposed of the cash and valuables which Macchiano had ordered his team to steal, Otho was referred to hundreds of times during the trial, both directly during Lachino's testimony and indirectly when the computer technicians entered the contents of Bonetti's hard drives into evidence. But unlike previous witnesses, Taza admitted nothing. He denied being Otho, said he had never heard of Hadrian, but more importantly, the defense soon established that nothing Machiano's gang had allegedly stolen was in Taza's possession at the time of his arrest, nor was there any proof he had ever handled any of the stolen merchandise. He's good. Uh, which the police had managed to recover. This made it perfectly obvious to the defense that Taza was either the victim of a badly bungled police investigation or he was being purposefully and viciously framed, perhaps even both. It was just as obvious to the defense that if this could happen to a small-time card parlor owner like Tazza, it could certainly happen to a high-profile businessman like Leo Macchiano. The prosecution quickly and loudly refuted this, pummeling Tazza with the testimony of previous witnesses, all of whom had attested to Tazza's ties to, the Macchiano, to Macchiano and his crime ring. But despite the onslaught, Tazza calmly and steadfastly maintained his innocence. By the time Tazza had left the witness box, the wind shifted. Macchiano's lawyers had managed to make a lack of the lack of evidence against Tassa seemed like a lack of evidence against his alleged former boss. In its daily post-trial press conference, the prosecution did its best to ridicule this as feeble, desperate defense ploy. Yet weak as it was, the ploy worked. Macchiano's guilt was suddenly less than irrefutable, and his conviction no longer seemed inevitable. A seed of doubt had been planted, one which only Macchiano himself could nurture. And he could only do that from the witness box. Read the conclusion of this story in the next issue of Eurovelt. Eurovelt, I suppose it would be if it was German. All right, interesting. Uh, that feels like uh, it says a game of chess. I certainly hope I don't have to play any chess. This game. Okay, so there's like also a crime ring going on. It's crazy. I need a card. Just double checking. There's nothing else for me to like pick up. Yeah, she's a good writer. But problem is, yeah, nothing else to pick up. You know what else that means? That means she's a good investigator. So we gotta be careful around her. I wanted to see. There's nothing on like the table, right? No. Okay. All right. Sorry. Sorry. Don't mind me. All right. Well. Go back to the clothing store. I'm not sure what else to do to like move the story along. We planted something on everybody. And I had called, but nobody picked up. Yeah. I haven't received any messages or anything. So yeah, am I just like waiting for time to go by? Yeah, it's true. I feel like Nancy would look really good with a mustache. Alright. Do, do, do. Uh, let's just take Luigi. No music. Sorry, Luigi. Uh, we're we're broke me. <laughs> well, not that we're broke, but I really don't feel like dancing for more money. That feels very weird. You'd think that the FBI, uh, the Italian FBI, could uh, provide us with something. Just saying. She's oh, there again. What's going on? Aha, uh -huh, yes. I read the article you wrote in Eurovelt magazine. The one about the Wait, Leo Macchiano. What if trial? she's that first in on it? Six articles with them or something. I don't know. I could have written six more. It was so fascinating. Do you specialize in crime stories? Not really. Also, I do seem to gravitate towards them. On the Macchiano trial was like this gigantic black hole. It just sucked me in. You see, the crime ring Macchiano ran. The more testimony I heard regarding its inner workings, the more impressed with it I became. Yes. Every heist was so well planned, and the whole of everyone yep, in his I agree. It is very so similar to what's going on. That Macchiano was the and only she's so, like, mystified by it. Maybe she joined in on it. Everyone did. 
heist was so well planned. Or, or she studied the crime ring, took notes from it, and then is now doing the same thing in Venice because she knows everything about it. Every heist was so well planned. The role of everyone in the organization was so well delineated that Macchiano was the only one who knew what everyone, who everyone was and what everyone did. So I wonder if she's Il Dottore and she's the one in charge of like all these other small How did the police player finally people. catch him? One of his underlings cheated one of his underlings hmm. who decided to get even by going to the police. Still, it took some two years Ooh, to Elena, collect enough evidence You did evidence it, didn't you? Macchiano you did it, I know you did. And even though he was sent to prison, mm -hmm. his conviction is being upheeled and could eventually be overturned. In the meantime, it looks like the void he left behind is being filled mm -hmm. by this phantom thief guy. Indeed. Macchiano always eliminated his competition one way or the other. So this phantom, he is... How do you Americans put it? He's making hay while the sun shines. Ganz genau. Is, is that a saying that we use, Nancy Drew? He's making hay while the sun shines? Is it possible that the phantom is... She's been like, no, no, it's not possible at all, no. Crime ring? No. <laughs> the phantom is obviously an expert at what he does. He would have been very high up in the organization. Mm. In which case, he would have been arrested along the... To be fair, though, death. she is using, like, means, the he, he pronoun, so... He'd be stealing food from the prison kitchen. Does Leo Macchiano have a family? He has a wife and three kids. Not that that makes him any less of a criminal. I'm trying Does to see if it's like one of his like, family members. Just two sisters. One lives in France, the other in Austria. If you're thinking that perhaps one of them is upholding the family tradition in the persona of Il Fantasma, that's extremely unlikely. Yeah, tell me about this Enrico Tazza What can you Tazza tell me guy? about Enrico Tazza? Well, he was rumored to have been in charge of safeguarding mm. the goods Leo Macchiano's gang stole. Now that Macchiano's <gasps> in jail, he's back to just owner, owner of a local, of a local card, card parlor, the House of right, Games, yes. huh? I saw his name somewhere. All I remember is he sounded a little shady. As I say, old habits die hard. Mm -hmm. Tatsa could still be doing something illegal, but if he is, it would be small potatoes compared to what he was doing for Macchiano. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. Come back anytime. All right, well, we need to get our disguise uh, on. So, um, perfect, excellent, best thing I've ever seen. Let's get that in there. Oh yeah, let's uh, let's get some gloves going. Do we have like the whole cat burglar outfit? Um, yes. No, just the mustache. Good. Excellent. We're going out like this. <laughs> hey, Colin. Hello, Nancy. Oh, nothing to I say to about my fun Drop outfit. Really? Lame. wonder if Margaret is back. Oh, she Hello, is. Nancy. I'll stop pestering you now. Ciao. Yeah, ciao. I wonder if he'll know who we are now if we go to the House of Games or whatever it is. You know that we are in a cat outfit, sans mask, but plus fake mustache. He'll never know, right? That's what we got. Yep, excellent. That's the best thing I've ever seen. Alright, let's uh, here first and then over here. The Campo Santa Margarita. What's up? What's up there? Go and do not return. Yeah, what's gonna happen if I just keep knocking? Nancy is a fashion icon. Don't know if y'all know that. You tell me you don't want to let this in? You are not welcome here. You're not welcome here. Um, what if, if there's a way that I can like black out his like camera lens or something? You know. Excuse me. Can I offer you an egg in these trying times? One egg, sir. Please 
Lisa Leaf. No? Okay. Ieri sera in televisione ho visto questo detective americano che ha anche di nome italiano. I just come up here with my little binoculars. <laughs> so that's a, I don't know. Go and do not return. Alright, so we're gonna have to find a way in there I somehow. Need my Italian dictionary. You don't need your Italian dictionary. Oh wait, is there a way around? Oh, the side. Oh! Nancy! Nancy, you did tell me that's not in our inventory. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh snap! Who needs to black it out? Just get a shotgun, silencer, walk under the camera so they can see you and pout. Problem solved. <laughs> Maybe a bit aggressive, but you know what? I agree. You should totally be allowed to throw an egg at the security camera, though. But Scotland Yard, huh? Justin Matthias Beaumont, a.k.a. Colin Baxter. Also, what is this paper randomly doing in a dumpster outside the House of Games? But born in Oxford, England, 8th of September, 1981. Graduated from the University of Oxford with a Bachelor of Fine Arts in May 2001. While painting a fresco at the country home of Jonas Lundquist in October 2004, Beaumont stole a painting by Renoir worth £75,000 uh, from Lundquist's private collection. The painting was recovered. Beaumont pleaded guilty, served one year at Ashwell Prison. That's all you have to serve for that, I guess? Uh, moved to Venice, Italy in April 2006 and works as a private contractor creating and restoring frescoes and mosaics. Seen on at least one occasion playing cards with Pietro Mazzola, Mazzola, a black market art dealer with ties to the former Macchiano theft ring. To date, no other known infractions. Huh. Colin. What else is in here? Oh, that looks like it's from uh, Haunted Carousel. Ooh, there's more. Let's grab our Italian dictionary. Katsu de Yoki. Ah, this is to Enrico Tazza. Okay, so this is... I don't know why it didn't uh, translate House of Games or whatever it is. Signor Tazza. We have received your request for a temporary employee and recommend our star pupil, Samantha Quick. I understand you are currently involved in a project and there will thereby send her your way sometime after Carnival. Ah, so that you may recognize her. Here we go. Here we go. Samantha will be wearing a red dress, white gloves, black sunglasses, and has blonde hair. That's what we need. We'll send you details on our Swiss account for payment at a later date. Best regards, Hortense Willard, recruiting info. Doppler Institute for Independent Industrial Arts. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a snowshoe from White Wolf of Icicle Creek. Looks like that's it. All right. A real question. What's happening over here with the Purpano? I'm assuming we need a yep four-digit code. All right. Let's go. Oh no, get some clothes, and we might have to dance because I don't know what we have. We aren't looking for non-aggressive. We're looking for effectiveness. True. We should probably just put on the cat burglar entire mask. Make a blonde joke about Samantha, but that wouldn't be a golden opportunity. But um Alright, let's see what we do have of this outfit so far. Just so I don't accidentally rebuy anything. I think all we have is the red dress. Alright, Nancy. Uh, yep, get that. That's hats and stuff. That's belts. Uh, I guess we'll just. Uh, okay, we should, <laughs> we should probably remove the mustache. I kind of like the mustache. Okay. Alright, hang on real quick. Let me just see what that note said again. Because I immediately don't remember. Um, red dress, got it. White gloves, black sunglasses, blonde hair. Doesn't say anything about her shoes or anything, so at least that's that. All right, let's go find some clothes. Let's go play some more Nancy Drew dress up game. I would kind of love it though if um, I don't know if y'all remember like way back in the day, but they they would have like Barbie games where it was all like Barbie dress up, and I would really enjoy it. Um, if we could do, like, Nancy Drew dress-up time. I think that would be very fun. 
All right, here we go. Costume de Vera. I like that there's also no time here. All right, so we got that. We just need black sunglasses. I don't see any black sunglasses. I think the ones that we have back at our place are just... Um... Oh, white gloves. We got... Oh, good. We got enough for them. Our yellow sunglasses. Okay. 60. 80. Hmm. I can't even tell what that is. Is that like a... A wig or something? I don't know. Oh no, okay. I guess I could have just taken the fairy or the gondola or whatever it is. Kanas Gusta. Hi Des, welcome to the stream. We're playing dress up Nancy Drew. We have a specific outfit that we need to get Nancy wow. into. Yeah, these are like yellow sunglasses. That won't be right. They specifically say black ones, but let's also find... Okay. Oh, a sunglasses kiosk. I'll bet is it... Let's check the Rialto market or the one in Piazza San Marco. Good idea. All right. Samantha will be wearing a red dress, white gloves, Right, we gotta put those on. Black sunglasses and blonde hair. <sighs> okay, here's the problem. <laughs> if those glasses cost us more than three euros, we're gonna have to come all the way back here, get our cat outfit, and go dance for money. <laughs> but let's give it a shot. I would, no, put, put your dictionary away, Nancy, you nerd. All right, let's go to the Rialto market. Take Luigi. No music. That's okay. All right, let's see if Rialto Market has something. Um, these are just flowers. Veggies. These were just like flower seeds or something. Um, that's drinks and gelato. So nothing there. I wish I was able to, like, pick up trash in this game. Alright, so no sunglasses kiosk there, but let's check out... Um... Piazza San Marco. Shouldn't have spent all that money on singing. Singing gondoliers! I feel like... Maybe here? No? Oh, duh, sunglasses. Oh, they're five. Without money. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. Ah. All right. Let's go here. Let's get Luigi to take us here. And you know what, Luigi, while you're at it, oh, we're not paying you, but keep on taking us. Oh. All right, let's go change and let's go dance. Poor Nancy. That's such an interesting <laughs> mechanic in this game. Because I definitely don't want to have to do it a ton. Now I gotta change all over again. Oh, cat ears. Can't forget those. Get our gloves on. Get our mask on. And our cool boots. All right, we're looking excellent. Let's go dance for money. I mean, surely the Italian FBI could just like give her some cash on the side or something, especially for all the extra work that we're doing for them. Um, is it Campo San Polo? I hope. Yeah, there it is. The club, Club Michio. Let's go dance. Nope, that's not really what I wanted to do, huh? In my mind, the back, it was like the back button, but it was like, go to the stage, which is probably like the side button or 
There we go, the curtain. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a nice <gasps> warm welcome Ooh. for our newest dancer, all the way from Yeah, but I guess this isn't France. business that they're telling Don't us to do. Oh, that's the fuzzy bell I hear it this time. Oh, I'm so good at this now. Oh. I got two euros for that. Get me back in there. Get me back in there, coach. We're dancing again. <laughs> two euros? Ladies and gentlemen, how about a nice warm welcome for our newest dancer, all the way from Aix-en-Provence, France, Punchy LaRue! <laughs> intensely focused. There you go. I got four that time. And like, am I missing a whole bunch? Like, am I not hearing them? This is hard. Dancing's hard. One more time. What does the fuzzy bell sound like? I think I have trouble hearing that one. I think I'm starting to get that one. This one's the do 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 do. Yep. And lasers. Okay. All right. One more shot. Here we go. All the way from the Amazon. May I present, Signorina Larue. Okay. Okay. Here we go. It is a very weird dance club. That's just like a symbol crash.
right, that was better. Here's the money you earn. Okay. That's a, that's at least something. Um Let's go back over to the Real 2 Bridge and back to the shops. Oh, no, that's not where we needed to go. Let's go back to Piazza San Marco. That's where we needed to be. Let's get some sunglasses. Sweet. Oh, the pager, the pager, the pager. Who am I tracking? What am I tracking? What am I doing? Message? Do I call? Nope. Am I tracking? Okay. Ah, ah, what do you want from me? Uh, he gave me whatever- he, I got up to 25, so it was like 9 minus 25, I guess. Am I tracking? What am I- I'm not sure what you want from me. Right, it's like flashing. I can't click on the exclamation point. I try to click on message. I click on track. Oh, that just means the guy is in the building. Oh, and I gotta go watch him. In my good outfit. I forgot about that. Good thinking. Let's, um... Absolutely nobody asked me what's up with my outfit. I've been out dancing all day. For 25 euros. Total of 22. So what, he gave me what, 14 that time? Right, 9 minus 25? Beep. Yes. She's like drunk with these things. <laughs> Nancy, what are you doing? <gasps> the bird's back. This looks interesting. Mm -hmm. He's got another message. Okay, we're gonna have to track that bird. Do we think that's the same bird with the same tracking device in it? Uh, can I just like call them? Probably not. Let's go downstairs. I don't want to call them while she's like right here. Although calling here doesn't seem much better. Yeah, okay, I can't physically call here. All right, let's go down to the, yeah, here. No? <laughs> Weird cat for the least enthusiastic crowd. Okay, um... Okay, fine, let's go outside Cognos Costa and see if I can use my pager here? I can't, I can't, I can't use my pager. Um... Would that be what I would do, right in that thing? Like, if I notice something, I'd let them know... They let me know, and I report back. I can't. I'm so confused. Am I doing something wrong? Am I not supposed to be in my cool outfit? And while we're here, I guess we can change. Or am I supposed to sneak back in? I don't know what I'd need to sneak in for. Okay. Let's get some gloves, get those off. It That's weird that, to me that gloves are in the necklace section, but whatever, I'm not. Get that wig on, get that dress on, and let's put some relatively normal shoes on. Okay. Let's go see what's going on. Oh, now I can use it? I'd better go somewhere private and call Sophia. Okay, maybe I just like, what, couldn't use it while I'm in my cat outfit? Nancy, what has happened? I'm pretty sure Fongo sent his trained pigeon out with another message. Do you want me to track it? No. Perhaps Pazza sent the pigeon back to him saying he never got the first message. Mm, the one, the one he, yeah, we did intercept it. So perhaps Fongo is sending the first message again. 
If we intercept this okay. one too, yeah, she's not wrong. Make them suspicious. Okay by me. Just thought I'd let you know. Ciao. Okay. Alright, so I guess they'll they'll page us if they need anything again. In the meantime, let's go to the game center and see what we can find there. Yeah, we have we should I'm pretty sure we have all the stuff on. Right? It's red dress, blonde hair, black sunglasses, white gloves. Hello, it's, it's me, Samantha from What is your name? Samantha Quick. Austria. You were early, but okay. please come in. Enrico is at the scope. Enrico is at the scope table. What's the scope table? Like a card game. <gasps> Ah, sono Enrico Taza. Benvenuta a Venezia. I'm Gracias. sorry, but if it's all right with you, I'd prefer to speak English. Bienvenido, of student. course, I whatever you wish. Italian. What a pleasant surprise. I wasn't expecting you until after Carnevale. Is that a problem? Oh, of course not. The sooner you get to work, the sooner you, we, hmm. will be compensated. So is so it these guys who are like young and behind it all? But enthusiastic as well. Tell me more about oh, yourself, Samantha. I'd rather just get down to business. I'm a woman of business. Because frankly, telling my life story to someone wearing a mask is just a little too freaky for me. I understand. Besides, yes. having never met you well, before, before, I would have no way of knowing if what you tell me is a lie or the truth. I always wear the same costume for Carnivale. Why? Oh. Because I'm a very superstitious man. I Is believe that always doing costume? things a certain way brings good fortune. For instance, I never discuss business with anyone oh no, unless and until game. that person beats he me. He breaks it out. It's actually sofa. like a whole Are fox and geese set. <laughs> it's definitely a different person than the person who repeatedly knocked on the gate before. That's absolutely not me. Um. I'm not familiar Never with the game of Scopa. It. It's a card game, very popular in Venice. We play it with the traditional Italian deck 40? of 40 cards. There are four oh, suits in a Scopa Oh, it's deck. this thing again. Coins, we saw this before cups, somewhere. Swords and clubs. Each suit has Coins, 10 cards. Cups, swords. Seven, the most valuable uh, cards. Okay. Six, five, four, three, two, and ace. Got there it. There are also three face cards. Valet. The valet. Knight, king. When you are taking tricks during the game, each card is worth what it says, with a valet worth eight, a knight nine, and a king ten. Uh huh. However, I like how it says Enrico end, and Nancy. Sevens are the most valuable, followed by sixes, aces, fives, fours, threes, twos, then all face cards. For scoring, these are called prime. Okay, so seven is the to most valuable. Game, seven, six is Three cards are aces. dealt to each player, then four cards are placed face up in the play area. Uh huh. If three kings appear, the cards are redealt. Okay. The player who did not deal the cards goes first. That's me. When it is your turn, you must play one card and one card only from your hand. Now, you have a two, and yes. there is a two in the play area. Yes. So you will play your two and take a trick. I discard a valet worth eight. You cannot make a match. So you discard your three. I discard the two. Okay. Now, because you have a knight in your hand, which yeah. is worth nine, and there and is a six, six and, and a three, three in the play area, six plus three equals nine, which means you have a match and you take a trick. Okay. I discard my ace, and because we are there. both out of cards, I deal us both three more cards. Okay. Ah. I you have, have sevens. Seven I have two hand. sevens. You also have an ace, which is yeah. worth one. A four and a two in the play area, which add up to seven. But there is also a what? seven in the play area. So, which do you match with your seven? The three cards that add up to seven or the seven? The rules say when presented with such a choice, you must take the trick by collecting the single card. And okay, so, so I must play you the seven match your with seven, seven card with the seven card in the this play This is a very complicated game. I wonder if it's I easier in junior detective mode? And take a trick. You have yet another seven in your hand. Now I can match, match it with it all with three the of the ace, cards. The four and the two and take a yep. trick. And since you have taken the last card in the play area, you say Scopa, Scopa and get the point. Okay. 
We continue to play by discarding and taking tricks until all 40 cards have been played. Okay. At that point, we count the points we have won by taking tricks and getting scopas. The first person to get 11 or more points wins. Got if it. no one has 11 or more points, the deck is shuffled. The other person deals, and we play another round. Okay. Are you ready to play? You bet. You bet. Okay. I'm decent at card games. Every I feel like we play new card games a lot with my husband's family, and it's always like... Oh. Alright, so I'll take this trick, then. And I'll take this trick. Um, I can't take anything, so I will discard the four. Okay, so... Uh, I want aces because they are most valuable. He's taking the ten. I'll take the two and the four. I just got a two that goes down. I will discard my five. Give me some more cards. Okay, I can only take the five. Um, I'll discard my four because I want to keep my seven ideally. Um, except there's... I don't understand. Okay. I don't know what to do. Oh, he had a seven. Son of a B. Okay. Um. If I discard my two, maybe I can take the four and the two here in a second. Or I'll take the one and the two because aces are worth more than fours and twos. Okay. Sure, I hope I'm playing this correctly. Can I? I can't trade like a six uh, and a one. Okay. For the seven. Cool. Um, discard that because I'm going to hold on to something. I, I think I want the ace. Right, okay. Apparently, I don't have much of a choice. All right, give me that seven because they're worth the most. And then give me an eight and a one. There's nothing for you there, sir. I'll discard my nine. We've played all our cards. You took the last trick, so you get all the cards left on the table. Oh. You get one point for having the most tricks. Okay. You get one point for having the most coin cards. Cool. I get one point for having the seven of coins. Didn't know now, that was a thing. let's add up what each card is worth and see who got the highest number of primes. You have the most valuable tricks, so you get one point. Okay. All right. I guess I'm doing well. I have no idea. Um... Uh, fine, have a four. It's probably my least valuable card, I guess. Uh, I can discard a one and then take... Oh, he has a five, two. Son of a B. Alright, all I'm doing is discarding things. That's not good. Alright, Nancy, we need to get this together. We have three points. Three points and he has one point. Um... Yeah, I can't... I can't seem to combine those. All right, let's discard this four, I guess. Two. If I discard this, oh wait. There we go, let's take the five and the two. That's another trick for me. I don't really have much of a choice there. Ooh, okay. Um, I guess I'll do that. Take that trick. Got a three. Uh, I'll put down my two. Although I probably should have put down my one. Not that it matters a whole lot. 
Okay, so I'll take that trick. Two, I'll take those. So nothing, I'll have to put my six down as well. Eh. Son of a gun. Um, let's get down to five. Oh, he has five, cool. Um, not sure how to be any better at this game. Here, I'll take my seven back. Scopa! Scopa! That's true. I took the last card on the playing field. Scopa. Oh, I Scopa again! Scopa! Ha ha! Uh, now let's put the nine down. Like the nine. Ooh, there's the seven of coins. I want you that bad boy. The last trick, so you get all the cards. Ooh, no, I've got the, the seven table. of coins. <laughs> you get one point for having the seven of coins. Thank you. I get one point for having the most tricks. Okay. I get one point for having the most coin cards. Okay. Now, let's add up what each card Ooh, is worth. Mine look and pretty see good. who got the highest number of primes. You have the most valuable tricks, so you get one point. Okay. And lastly, we score the scopas. <gasps> I had two scopas. Three scopas? No? Oh, I've got seven points. Okay. All right, so we just have to make it to 11. So we're doing pretty good. Um, I'll take freaking all of these. Thank you. <laughs> oh, and that one. Yeah. Okay. Take that two. Oh wait, take that six. My brain did not even see that. Um, it's a three, a one. Give me some more cards. What have I got? Ugh. Maybe I can take my two back. Oh, yeah, the six. Um, let's. See. If I have the two and the seven and he doesn't take them. Yep. Four. Nothing. All right. I've got, let's see, three and a four, seven, ten. Nope. I got nothing. Let's put down a five. High society card games while the other two opponents are playing. Yeah. Other people stand around with glasses of wine applauding every time a successful move is made and or, um... Dang, you took my four. I was hoping to get the four and the five back as the nine. I don't know what that noise was. Um, yes, and or there's also like pickpockets going around while everyone's intensely focused on this game. Okay, uh, what do I want? I want the nine. Yes. Ooh, he took the three and the five. Uh, I guess I'll put down a one because it's really hard to get other ones. I guess in your hand, you want to have like a higher number because that's the easier. Oh, oh and he has the seven of coins. Um, yeah, I feel like you want to have the highest ones in your hands because it's easier to make those through combination. Like, for example, this. Now those are mine. You took the last trick. So you get all the okay. cards. Okay, I think I might have done okay on coins that time. Yeah, I you did. Get one point for having the most. Tricks. And I get a point for you having the coins. You get one point for having the most coin cards. But I don't get a point for having the seven of coins. I get He's one got that. point for having the seven of coins. Now let's add up what each card is worth, and see who got the highest number of primes. You have the most valuable okay. tricks, so you get one point. Perfect. Oh, I'm only one point away, and he's only got four. So I must be doing pretty decent at this game, I guess. Um, let's do these. I'll just take all of them. Thank you. <laughs> I'll take that one. Put down the four. Uh, I want, yes, the seven of coins. Lovely. Take. Oh, he has a three. I was hoping he wouldn't, so I could have the three and the four. Uh, we'll put down the six. He has a one. I'll take the six and the one. I feel 
this isn't t a terribly difficult game once you get the hang of it. I'll put down another eight. Actually, no, I'll put down a one. Discard that. Five. Because I can take the eight. It's got a one. Um. I put down a nine and he doesn't take it. Okay, I tried. Yeah, once you see it being played, like it's, oh, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have gotten rid of that nine. I should have kept that nine. The boo. <sighs> oh, I should have taken the five. What am I doing? Okay, it's okay. I only got to win one more point. Give that six. It's, scopa. um... Oh, you scopa jerk. <laughs> uh, scopa this. Oh, good. Put that two down. Ready for this, Scopa? Ah, what a great way to end the last round. Unfortunately, what? in this case, no point is given for a Scopa. It seems like cheating, but I have the most you coins and point the seven of coins the and the most tricks. tricks you get and I probably have worked a lot, so give me all my you get points. One point for having the there seven it is. Of coins. Yes, I do. <laughs> no points for you. Yeah, check now, out your sad tricks. Oh, look at how much mine are worth. got the highest number of primes. You have the most valuable tricks. Mm -hmm. so and then a score of point. fourteen to four. Lastly, it sounds we oh, score the fourteen scopas. to five. Fantastic! You have beaten me. I sure have. And because you beat me, <gasps> we can finally okay. talk business. I have a client who desires the Sadal Melik Sapphire. Sadal Melik. I'm not in the mood for a quiz, quiz. Signore Tazza. <laughs> Forgive me. Applause. The Thank Sadal you. Milek is said to be the largest and most beautiful star, star sapphire, sapphire in all of you. Is this a real thing? As you probably know, its current owner is a man named Vladimir Thanatos, who keeps it at the Palazzo Zateri, guarded by one of the most sophisticated security systems ever devised. Did he hire Even like a thief? Someone with your youthful energy and talent will find stealing it a challenge. Which is why I suggest you contact Gina as soon as possible. Gina? Who's Gina? Who's Gina? I'm scared to ask that because maybe I should know. <laughs> you Americans <laughs> and your sense <laughs> of humor. <laughs> Gina who? You are a hoot, Samantha. <laughs> but now, back to business. Contact Gina soon. The more time Something you I'm give missing her, here? <laughs> the more details on the system she will be able to give you. Okay. There, business is over. Back to place. No, I don't Do have, time have time for another, for another game, game of scope. Of scope huh? Absolutely no, not. No, I'd better get going. Good luck, Samantha. As soon as you have the sapphire, bring it to me. I was a little nervous saying who's Gina because I was like, oh, is that someone I'm supposed to know and I don't? Now, the real question is, what do we think the code to their propane tank is? Hmm. Oh. All right. Where am I? Oh, there. Okay. Let's get back to Cardinal's Costa. I should probably... Well, I guess we don't have to change out of this outfit. It is kind of fun. I agree. Oh, the uh, newspaper's gone. Can I eat these chocolates yet? Nancy, eat them. I wonder if we can ask Colin about his shady past, and then I probably have to end it there for the night. <laughs> but I want to know. Hello, Nancy. I does is have to know. Does Margarita know that you went to prison in England for mm. art theft? Mm. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm. You're not gonna try to lie to me again, are you? Are you? My real name is Justin Beaumont. Two years ago, I removed a Renoir from the private collection of a man to whom it was nothing more than a financial investment. Well, it's his financial I took it investment. Home so it would be appreciated as the masterpiece it was. What? Its former owner took issue with my yeah, actions. No, no I was kidding. arrested and I was sent to prison for a year. As for Margarita, she's the only one who knows. Mm. She says mm. if I don't continue to work for her for next to nothing, she'll tell all her friends I have a criminal record, which would essentially end my career here in Venice, just yep. like it ended my career back in England. If that were to happen, I'd be utterly lost. I'm trying to feel bad for you, but I don't have words, it in me today, dude. she's blackmailing you? What's worse, not only does she keep trying to get me to use substandard materials so she can save money on the renovations I'm doing for her, 
but she wants me to cover it up by lying to the Restoration Council about it. Mm. And for someone in my precarious position, <sighs> let's just say resisting has been very, very difficult. Enough. I insist we change the subject. I should be running All right. around. That is a wig you're wearing, right? Oh, yes, it is. Good, because there's nothing wrong with your real oh. hair. Nothing at all. Thanks. I think. I don't know. <sighs> We're gonna go up to the the rooftop, get a nice view. All right. We're gonna leave it there for the evening. I hope you all have enjoyed more of the uh, the Phantom of Venice, this newest Nancy Drew game that we've been playing. Um, I think it's been really interesting. I'm kind of interested to see where it goes from here because it seems like the uh, thank you for the compliment. Appreciate it. Uh, it feels like the Italian FBI is possibly on the wrong guy, or I mean, maybe if he is talking to Tatsa. I don't know, but it really feels like they're having us do the wrong work and we're just gonna go and solve it on the side. So I'm excited to see what happens next time as we kind of, I guess, go figure out who Gina is and get ready to steal a sapphire. <laughs>